Welcome back to Insights provided by Deloitte. I'm Francis Rose from Federal News Radio. My guests are Deborah Golden, the Federal Cyber Risk Services Leader at Deloitte, and Emily Mossberg, the National Leader of Resilient Services for Deloitte. And we're at the resilient part of our conversation. Uh, Emily, I want to start with you. Define resilience and what it means in a cyber context. When we, when we think about what it means to be resilient, we're talking about what it takes to prepare for, have readiness for, respond to, and recover from a cyber incident. We want organizations to be prepared and be ready to be able to move forward and come back even stronger after they've had a cyber incident. Deborah, one of the things that you talk about, one of the principles that Deloitte advocates is a perpetual cyber preparedness. This fits again with the CDM concept that the government is working toward, but what does that mean, perpetual cyber preparedness? I think it's being able to continuously monitor and be ready to respond. I think absolutely, as Emily said, it's the ability to come back quicker, better, and stronger. And if you've built that into your environment, it should be easier or quicker to come back from an incident when it does occur. There are two elements of resilience that you uh, and your team at Deloitte write about, Emily, and talk about a lot, and that's planning and testing. Mm -hmm. Are those things that you don't see or that you don't see as often as you'd like, especially in, in federal agency organizations? Absolutely. When, when we talk again about being resilient, we talk about the, the readiness components and the readiness components really include those elements around assessing where you are, planning for what, you, what may happen mm -hmm. and what you need to be prepared for, and then testing what, has, what your plans look like and how you go ahead. And so what we're seeing more and more of today is more emphasis on plans, more emphasis on the governance structure required to respond to an incident, as well as more time being spent on testing those plans. That includes things like cyber, cyber simulation, cyber wargaming, so that you understand all of the pieces and all of the players from your organization that you need to bring into um, an incident and may help you manage through an incident so that you can understand how you can make that plan better and so that you're not making decisions at the time of fire mm -hmm. when you're actually working your way through an actual incident. Deborah, when you work with clients, do you find that there is a, a deficit, I guess, between what people think they're ready for and what the testing and, and planning actually yields that they are ready for? Yes, absolutely. And I think that's why it's critical to do some of the simulation and the wargaming so that you can actually look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective because the end-to-end -end perspective includes things like marketing and PR and contractual obligations that typically when people are looking at perhaps a system and its ability to respond or recover from an incident, they're looking at that one system, not actually the end-to-end impact of an incident on someone's environment. So I absolutely think that we're seeing also a bigger need for people to collaborate in these types of incidences so they can be ready to recover. Deloitte's planning the Quantum Dawn 3 cybersecurity exercise. What is that? Well, Quantum Dawn 3 is actually sponsored by SIFMA. Deloitte uh, had the privilege of being the observer in this exercise. This is an exercise for the entire financial services sector. And it really brings together all of the banks, all of the financial institutions, the regulators, FSISAC, and allows them to test an incident that would be beyond just a single organization or a single financial institution. It's a test of what would happen if there was an attack against the entire financial services sector. Um, it really is an interesting um, thing to watch play out because there are so many different dependencies on these agencies, um, on the regulators associated with the agencies, and to be able to pull all of that together and really see what would happen, not just within a particular uh, organization, but across the entire financial system of the United States. Um, is fascinating and it also allows us to be more prepared for that type of attack if it should occur. Federal agencies sometimes have a tendency to say that's great, the private sector is the private sector and we're unique snowflakes. What can they learn from an exercise like that? Well, and I, I don't know that that's the case anymore. I mean, we're so intertwined, um, whether it be as a contractor or a civilian or a, a human being, right? Yeah. We're all kind of intertwined with both the private sector and the public sector. So I think actually there's a lot of emphasis and focus on trying to see what 
leading practice can be gleaned from this type of an exercise. So again, their impact is clearly known, I think, and I think that both the public sector and the private sector are kind of watching each other to see what they can learn from one another and actually deploy those types of leading practices in their own environment. In exercises like this, is there also a deficit between the people who are involved in them and paying attention to the results and the people who should be involved with them and paying attention to the results? I, I think we're seeing an improvement there quite a bit. Um, Quantum Dawn 2 was a few years back. This has been Quantum Dawn 3. Um, every time one of the exercises happens, there's a broader sense of involvement, participation. You see the lines being crossed more in terms of the level of communication between the public and private sector, the different institutions, the industry groups that are involved in collaborating. So I think that we're seeing definite improvement in terms of those that should care and mm -hmm. those that do, absolutely. Who should care who up till now, Deborah, uh, it's been maybe a little more difficult to pull them in? I think the other point there is also understanding, again, the boundaries. Because uh -huh. as we look particularly at agencies that are looking at things like managed services or shared services where they're leveraging different organizations or third parties from an infrastructure perspective, the caring now has to go outside your own boundary. So yeah. I think it's a matter of not just who cares, but it's what they're caring about. So I think the who cares is now at the executive level, um, given the reputation and the brand damage that can be done by an incident. And I also think it's the what we should care about now is not necessarily in an organization's four walls. I think it goes beyond that. Final thought, um, can we take a parallel in the exercise that you talked about apply it to the federal government in terms of some kind of a potential cyber attack in the future that goes across agencies, that affects two or multiple agencies the way that uh, that uh, war game affected multiple institutions. Absolutely. And I think that um, across the board, we're seeing more of that. There's been more simulations across each of the critical infrastructure, um, so healthcare, energy, financial services, and we're also seeing um, coordination of the associated federal agencies as part of those simulations, as well as the federal agencies themselves starting to conduct their own exercises, whether that be within Department of Defense or intelligence or more broadly across um, the federal sector as a whole, that's definitely something that's happening. I think everyone knows that you know we've got to be prepared. We have to start thinking about the realities of what a cyber attack could, could bring. This is Insights provided by Deloitte. I'm Francis Rose. My guests, Emily Mossberg and Deborah Golden of Deloitte on Federal News Radio.